welcome everyone to InMind Extensions. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Marcos Nunez. I'm the marketing coordinator at InMind. Some important information before we begin. This webinar is live, so we will be muting everyone's microphone. Please send us your questions through the chat. We will answer them at the end of the presentation. This webinar will be recorded, so you will receive a link to access the recording after the webinar. For more than 10 years, InMind has supported the digital transformation of organizations in several industries. This development has accelerated again this year, especially with the large amount of changes that the pandemic has brought. As a Microsoft Gold Partner, we have structured our offer with new methodologies and pre-packaged offers that allow us to offer you business management solutions while adapting them to your present reality and giving you full control. Our team organized this virtual event, Extensions, because we believe more than ever that your business needs smart, innovative, and scalable solutions, like the one we will show you, to grow to its full potential. Thanks to InMind's proprietary solutions and our ecosystem of technology partners, such as Unit4, we provide you with the tools to achieve the digital transformation of your ERP environment and much more. Now, let me introduce you to Thomas Sonnichson, Partner Manager for Unit4. Excellent. Thank you, Marcus, and uh, welcome, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining this session. Um, and uh, I think before I start, I'd like to uh, Thank in mind to uh, for involving me in this uh, this presentation today and inviting me to this presentation. It's always good to show the the latest technologies that are available, um, and you know, in mind being one of our our, our key partners in in, in North America, uh, we're always happy to support in mind in the, uh, in their, their their marketing events as well as to support them in their in their sales processes. Um, great thing as well, InMind is also a, a user of, of PSA, so they have a clear understanding of how to use our practice management solution, uh, uh, you know, across their organization. Great. So, um, yeah, as Marcus said, my name is Thomas Sonickson. I'm the partner manager for Unit 4 PSA. Um, and what we're going to be going around today and what I'm going to be presenting you today is, in essence, the, our practice management solution, which is built on Microsoft technologies. So um, the agenda for the next uh, 30 to 40 minutes is really I'm just going to be going through an, an introduction to the uh, practice management platform, just so I give you an overview of, of our concept and vision for PSA. I will then go into a, a live demo of the solution, so to actually show you how the whole solution works and how the the the, the practice management is it, it sits within the D365 uh, uh, platform and how easy and how standardized the solution actually is. Um, and then got one or two slides at the end, and then there's uh, an opportunity for for questions. Um, and uh, Marcus, I believe uh, you're going to be you're going to be monitoring for those questions so we can just pick that up at the end okay all right so I think uh, um, let me start off with the the concept and vision of, of our uniform PSA suite that is built directly into Dynamics 365 so what we refer to when we talk to our solution really it's it's we talk about this smart collaboration and the reason why we talk about smart collaboration is because our our solution is a single solution that is in embedded into the Microsoft Dynamics 365 customer engagement solution. It is it sits on the Microsoft Power platform and it's one solution that we refer to manages the whole process from funnel to cash. So you have the uh, uh, um, quality relationship management, you have marketing, you have the full sales and customer engagement component in it as well because we leverage all those components of D365 CRM. So you have those you have the full sales cycle management within the solution. Once you win an opportunity and you actually start your project you then that's you would then hands over to the, the 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 unit 4 PSA component which is the practice management solution which we've built into the uh, into d365 
It's a full practice management component, so it manages all the various aspects of your, of your project. It has a full time and expense component as well, full invoicing capabilities as well. Um, our solution is finance solution independent. Um, so what I mean by that is that we have the ability to integrate into any other financial solution that 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 you are using so when you look at our solution we don't have a discussion around replacing the actual financial component we look at more of the operational components and therefore you look at how we can actually uh, uh, fix the the operational and project components within your within your organization we also have a, a human capital management component within the solution as well. That's obviously very important uh, because when you're running a practice management, you need to understand the skills and competencies of your staff members. You also need to understand the uh, the utilization of your of your resources and to be able to maximize your 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 resources. Um, you know, to, to maximize the profitability uh, uh, with, within the organization. So it's a it's a complete it's a complete solution all built within the D365, and we refer to our solution as being standardised and templatized. So what we mean by that is we we have a, a pre-built packages um, and uh, Marcus did mention to, to that earlier that that in mind have these pre-built packages for you know from a solutions point of view across the board so we fit into that philosophy that they have from a business aspect so our solution is standardized and templatized it's there to simplify the work process with it within the within the organization and within the within the practice management um, and it's built on the power platform so it's built in, an, in a solution which is innovative um, and and modern. It's there to supply you with the the, the cutting edge and the latest uh, uh, di a digital uh, framework from a, a business application. Because it sits on the Microsoft Power platform, platform, you have the capabilities of leveraging the rest of of, of Microsoft's uh, Azure's Azure capabilities, as well as there's a full integration into the Microsoft uh, 365 productivity tools. So it's all about leveraging your current investments and your it, it, into the Microsoft platform. Um, there's a, a a full integration into Power BI. So if you're looking for a cross uh, organizational reporting structure or, or uh, uh, um, business intelligence and structure across your organization, you know, we can leverage that across all the applications and you can start drilling down into the, the actual data of your uh, of your organization and instead, of, and instead of having stagnant data, your data now, now becomes uh, actionable. The, you can also start, you can also leverage Microsoft Flow and as well as if you're wanting some further extensions of the of the solution uh, with with Microsoft Power Apps, that's where in mind have the the internal capabilities to start looking at those uh, uh, those type of uh, um, customizable um, applications for for organizations. So in essence, you know our, our solution is modern. It's a, it's intelligent. Uh, it's adaptable. It's a it's a full Microsoft Cloud solution. So you have the ability to access the the application and your your company data. Uh, basically, you know, any time and anywhere, and off any off any device. So as long as your device has got internet access and and runs some form of uh, a browser, you can access uh, you can access your information and actually do your work. So. The PSA app, as I mentioned earlier, is ERP independent. And where we focus in on from, a, from Unit 4 PSA, we focus in on the operational components within an organization. Because it's built within dynamic CRM, it's a it's front-end focus. So in other words, we look at the, the, the aspect of an organization where you're actually making money, uh, and that's from a professional service organization that's within your time and your, your, your time and expense components, your fee earners, your project managers, you're selling time and you're selling your expertise and that is where the solution actually sits. So it's front-end focus, deals with all those daily operational components with which are, are, are relevant within professional organizations. So from projects to, to, to contracts, work, work breakdown structures, time and expense, resource utilizations, approvals, et cetera.
Now, there is an integration, as I mentioned, we do integration to, to financial solutions. And the reason why we deal with the operational components within professional organizations is that the financial side is really just a transactional side. And what we really find, you know, with our with our over 15 to 20 years of experience within, within professional service organizations is that 90% of your employees actually sit in the operational component and about 10% of sit within the actual transactional co components. In other words, the financial side you know, of, of, of dealing with the finances of the organization. Now, the great thing about uh, uh, sitting with the Power Platform, as I mentioned earlier in my previous slide, is that you have the capabilities of the business intelligence. There are already built-in dashboards, which I'm going to be showing you in a few minutes in my in my demo. Um, but if you're wanting to extend that with Power BI and InMind have those capabilities, as those in-house capabilities to start looking at PI and uh, Power BI, and you know stretching that business intelligence across your organisation. So, this is something which is uh, uh, very familiar to a lot of professional organizations. It's very f familiar to a lot of modern organizations as well. Uh, and uh, 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 Marcus mentioned it as well earlier, uh, you know, about the digital transformation, transformation that's suddenly become extremely relevant for organizations because of, of, of the pandemic. So this is a classic example. A lot of organizations have a single solution for their CRM. They have a separate solution for their, uh, for their HRM. They run it, uh, their ERP solution in something else. Resource management, time and expense. So they have these multiple applications which, which are basically silos of data scattered around the, 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 the workplace and the organization. And you don't get the single view of, and of, of, of your data and you don't get the single view of the actual health of your projects. Now, this is something that we deal with with our solution. So if you just uh, um, have a look at this and if you think of, you know, from a business focus aspect and, and for those of you that are, that are on, the, uh, uh, on the call at the moment, uh, you know, just think of the type of uh, maybe just pick two or three of, 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 of these points which you would feel relevant to yourself that you'd like to see within a professional uh, uh, um, uh, project management solution um, and you know and just jot them down for yourself and see if I actually managed to 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 talk about these the great thing about our solution as well is that we also address we also address the bottom line of of what organizations are looking for and organizations are looking to support the needs of their modern professionals so we have these this the, the new the new working methodology with which people have so it's work from home we have this this scattered landscape from a uh, a work first, workforce point of view, and our solution really supports that. It supports the individual and the, the, allows them to do their work that they need to do and work on the projects that they need to do and allocate their time and expenses towards the specific projects which they've been associated to. But it also supports the organization and the, and the project managers and gives them full visibility into the projects that they're actually working from and working on and working on. And it doesn't matter you know, at what time of day on, and, and how they actually um, access that. We also have a built-in class uh, reputation. So our solution is built in on uh, a best of breed practice, which I'll be talking about um, at a later stage. And a lot of organizations within this, from, from a pandemic point of view, are looking at, at lowering the cost of IT and going for a SaaS model really assists you with that because you have a predictable cost element around your licensing structure. Now, um, I mentioned earlier in my first slide when I was talking about the smart cloud collaboration, um, I referred to that our solution is standardized and templatized. So our focus is on professional services organizations, but we've also taken it one step further. And we've actually templatized our solution for the four sub-verticals which you see in front of you there. So we have a, a templatized solution for financial services, for IT services which, uh, which in mind are actually using themselves to manage their projects which they, which they deliver successfully and are able to report successfully on as well. Uh, we have a, a, a solutions for engineering consultants as well as for management consultants. So it's a full templatized solution, it's out the box, 
predefined work, work breakdown structures and predefined workflow processes, which means that when you look at, at our solution and, and you decide to go for a new a project management solution, if you see what you like, uh, and 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 and, and oh, sorry, you like what you see, um, and you want to get up and run really quickly. You know, you you we we have the solution predefined and pre-built for you, which is really relevant nowadays. So uh, before I get into uh, the slide, I just want to you know give you a bit of an overview here. So again, the the uh, the solution is is designed for those four those four sub verticals, and, and our and, you know our ambition is really to provide an environment for professional organizations which allow them to build with build with precision, which means that you start getting ca your cash in on, on a far more regular basis. You can grow your new business and, and, have, and, and have, have a greater win rate uh, based on your uh, previous projects and producing uh, project budgets uh, uh, because of the historical information that you actually have um, and actually, you know, increasing your resource utilization. And our total solution is standardized, it's simplified, it's built on the, the, the D365 platform, which is there to innovate you from a future aspect. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go through to my demo. Um, so, Marcus, I'm just going to flick my screen. Just let me know if you can see this. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you very much. So, as I mentioned earlier, we have our uh, our solution. Is, it sits on the Microsoft Power Platform. So you might be wondering why we're actually looking at the uh, um, the uh, um, Outlook environment. The solution, because it sits in Dynamics 365, it actually integrates directly into your outlet, into your Outlook. So as opposed to having multiple solutions that you work you're working with, so if you ref, if you remember that slide I, I showed you earlier with the digital transformation, all those different applications that you're working with, we're giving you one application, one platform to walk to to, to work from. Now I'm sure you're all familiar with 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 Outlook. If you use uh, the Microsoft productivity tools within your organization, then you'll be familiar very much familiar with this. So what I want to just show you here is that uh, um if you have a look at the, the your emails, now we receive multiple emails on a daily basis and this is what we refer to as unstructured data. Now combining your 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 outlook with Dynamics 365 and with PSA, you start taking your unstructured data and creating structured data out of that. So what I really mean by that is if I just have a have, click on the specific uh, um, email, I just want to move this over. Sorry, Marcus, before I go any further, can you see my go to, my go to webinar little menu? Yeah. Okay, and if I move that, is that better? No, I can't. I can't see it. Sorry. It's, okay, it's, it's just invisible. for my own. Great. Thanks very much. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm more familiar with Teams, to be honest. But the, anyway, so here we go. The um, so here I have an email. Once you've actually have integrated into or, or you go down the route of, of of purchasing Unit 4 PSA, you actually have that the integration into the, into your Dynamics environment. So you get this little icon. You're able to launch the icon in the D365 environment. And what this really allows you to do, it allows you to start tracking the emails, that unstructured data that you're getting on a daily basis, and you can start tracking that towards either opportunities or to leads or depending on how you're looking at from you know from from a sales engagement point of view but within our environment we can start tracking those emails towards your actual projects so if I've now clicked on this I can click on my uh, um, uh, etc regarding I've actually just created a project which I'm going to be showing you just now and I can track this up this this uh, email towards my specific project which I've created within the solution. So now what happens is that I, I start taking my unstructured data and I start assigning it towards projects and here you can now see I have a specific project that I'm working from, I can see the company that it's actually associated to and this, the entity which I'm actually working from as well, gives me a bit of an overview of the actual contact detail, who the person is, etc, etc.
Okay, so that's just a quick overview of how Outlook can integrate seamlessly into the Dynamics 365 environment. Um, but I'm not here to speak about how the, the sales process of Dynamics 365. So I'm actually going to take you directly into our project management solution called Unit 4 PSA. So for the sake of the demo, I've just opened up a separate tab just to show you all. So when you when you open up the Unit 4 PSA solution, you're presented with this, this type of a view. Um, before I discuss anything more around here, I just want to have a, a brief overview of the actual landscape that you see in front of you. On the left-hand side, this is what we refer to as our navigation bar. So these are all the various modules which we use to actually build our projects and actually maintain and progress our projects through their life cycle of the, of the project. Time and expense, various type of projects, employees, utilization sheets, etc. approvals. Okay, so this is where all the, the module sits on the left-hand side. The top bar is referred to our command bar, and there's multiple aspects that we that we that we uh, have access here as well. Before I go into that, I just want to show you a little bit from a dashboarding point of view. So I spoke about those um, the business intelligence component. We have pre-built dashboards that are pre-built and defined for our sub verticals. So all depending on what type of business that you actually uh, in. We have a we we have predefined dashboards which are relevant to you, and these are dashboards which are built on 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 our, our years of experience being in the professional services game. So this is one specific dashboard that we've got. It's called the PSA dashboard. This is just a generic demo environment which I'm showing you today. So I'm sure you'll understand this, that there is a bit of duplication of information and names and that type of stuff. Um, so this is one, one specific dashboard. It shows all my active projects. Um, I have a, a more of a pipeline type of aspect with, my, with regards to my active projects as well. Great thing about this is that you can actually drill down into this information. If you're finding something like this is too small, you can expand the chart, which makes it easier for you to see. And wherever you see this little hand, and 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 this will, I'll refer to this through the whole the, the whole way through the actual demo, is that wherever you see the ha the hand, you can actually drill down into this information. So I'm going to say, well, I want to see you know who are the actual owners of this specific that are working for this specific environment. You can decide what to actually have a look at. So let's have a look at the pie chart, and you can see that within this specific company, these are the various uh, uh, project managers which have, are working on various projects within this organization. The great thing as well, it highlights exactly what, it, what the information is, who the individual is. And what's also really nice about this is if I'm wanting to see a little bit more information around where this data actually comes from for this pie chart, I can just view the records. So if you have, a, if you start starting to notice what I'm showing you here, it's a single environment. Everything is really much, you know, one or two clicks away, um, and it starts showing you the information directly and easily available for you. So here I have the chart which I showed you, the type of view that I that I that I that I wanted to have a look at, and it now shows you all the data on the right hand side. What's great as well is I I just click on the ones that I'm I'm working on so Thomas Sonicson. I click on those and it'll just highlight and it'll just eliminate the rest and it'll make the type of data that I need to see far more easier. So again, it's taking that unstructured data that you have within your organization and making it far more structured. The good thing about this as well is I can export this to uh, to Excel and if I'm wanting to. So again, that's another advantage of having it integrated into your productivity tools. Um, and then you can, you know, there you can slice and dice it a little bit further if you wanted to do that. If you have predefined reports that you've built, you can do that as well. Or if you wanted to send this as a, as an email link to uh, to an individual within your organisation to review some content around these specific projects, you can just email this link off as well. The great thing as well about all of this is if I'm wanting to get back to my original dashboard, I literally just click on there. It'll show you all my base information that I was working from, and if I want to go back to my original dashboard, I just click on that and it'll go back on into all my information there. Okay, so 
one thing I want to highlight to you for here is that we have this little uh, let's refer to as as a, as a quick a quick create for a record. Okay, if I click on this, I've got multiple things that I can that I can create. The great thing is here is I have a project component, and this is unique to Unit 4 PSA. So if I click on this. I can quickly create a project and it's quite easy to actually create the project. So I can say here, um, I'm going to call it uh, in mind uh, part uh, showcase. Um, I can associate it to a, a, a company quite quickly. And remember, I to refer to those predefined work breakdown structures that we have. In our solution, well, this is those templates that I'm actually referring to. So they standardize and they templatize for those sub verticals that we're having a look at. So let me have a look here. So here, for example, I'm just demoing the environment for the IT, the IT consultancy firm. Uh, you know, because we it is in conjunction with with uh, uh, with in mind here. So here I say here sure step rapid. Um, I can define what type of project, the project status. I need to assign it to a, a specific entity as well. So if you have a multiple entities within your organization and you run multiple projects across those entities as well, we can manage that as well. Again, if you run a global organization, we can also ma manage multiple currencies as well. Uh, for the sake of the demo, I need to assign everything to myself, etc. Um, I've already created a project uh, just in preparation for this uh, this webinar today. So I'm not going to go ahead and save and close this. I'm just going to cancel this. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to actually quickly create a project from our solution. So I've created a project. I've actually pinned it uh, to my uh, my pin board, if you want to call it that. So I'm sure you're all familiar with that type of uh, uh, concept that sits within the, the Microsoft environment. So I'm going to click on this specific project. When you see the, this project opening up, it gives you a whole lot of data. And this is really just a, the, the summary is a snapshot of the specific project, um, if you if it's come from a specific opportunity, you'll see where that where, where that opportunity was. So you start having an understanding of your pipeline, and if you start leveraging Power BI, you can start drilling across that type of information as well. So here it shows me that my project type is this happens to be an ad hoc project. Um, uh, we're using the sure step rapid, uh, rapid methodology that we've defined for the specific project type, the project status and active. There's, you know, the owner information, the account type, etc. There's a whole lot of additional information that you can add. You can see my name is, is, has been produced multiple times for this project. And that's because from a demo point of view, I need to take on multiple roles to show you the, the, the full uh, process of the actual demo. So you can have a briefing, contract signed, sent, signed, etc., etc. So it gives you a, a, a great overview of the project, okay, for your project managers. You can also see the specific team members that are involved in the specific project. So I've just associated one specific team member within my organization to this, to, to this project. If you have project teams, so let's say, for example, you have a group of individuals within your organization that, is, that, is, that, that are experts in doing one type of project, you can put them into a team and automatically allocate them to a specific project. If I'm wanting to find additional uh, users, it's quite a simple uh, process to do. Uh, sorry, Zainab, um, I'm going to add Zainab to this. And it basically just looks through your organization and it adds that individual to your to your uh, uh, your project. You can see I've also got hourly rates. So we have a predefined projects. We we uh, um, we have defined a project our types. You would decide and and in mind would implement this for you. The actual uh, the, the actual hourly rate. So when you have a shirt at a specific project, you would define the project for the budget for those projects. Um, if it changes because of negotiations through uh, the, the the opportunity phase, this gives you the opportunity to actually change the hour rates for that as well. You give the financial overview. So you uh, how much has been invoiced out? How big is the actual opportunity? 
community, what it needs to be invoiced, um, if it's integrated into your financial solution and we see that certain amount of, of invoices have been paid, you will see the paid the information here as well. So this gives the project managers a good overview of the actual financial health of the project, which is obviously important. If I look at my the details component, this is where this shows the predefined blueprint or work breakdown structures, those templatized projects that we've actually built for you and predefined for you. So these are the various sub steps that we've defined and built on best practice for the specific type of project. We've defined for the specific item types, but if you wanting to, you can actually go in and change the specific line item type for that project if need be. We have multiple, we have over seven diff different types of item types that you can bill. So from an hourly rate all the way through to recurring, to product, expense fixed, etc. I'm just going to keep this at fixed fee for the time being. And just take a step back and what you, what you see here is that I'm not moving in between multiple screens it's really just a backwards and forth on the actual on the actual uh, project screen so there's the actuals there's invoices etc cetera, etc cetera. and there's a whole lot of various components that have been uh, um, associated to this this project that email which I uh, which I tracked earlier with the, within my office uh, 365 environment with my Outlook uh, that I tracked against the project. There you can see there's that specific email. So anyone that's actually involved with this project actually gets to see the full visibility around the project and the interactions with the specific project as well. Okay, we also have a, an area called related and I want to show you something here. So this is the specific budget which you define. So you do as a user, as, as an organization, you would define the values and the hour quantities for the specific projects that you are running. We give you the framework of the individual steps. You fill out, you, you provide the actual quant hour quantities and the hour rates as well. These are the templatized that sits as a standard with, with, within, your, with, within your organization, but you can change it. So let's say, for example, during the, uh, uh, um, during, during the opportunity phase, you realize that the scoping session is actually going to be much longer. It's going to be double from a scoping aspect, you know, and when you save this, you can see that the value actually does change. It's fully interactive and because it's cloud-based, you know, I like to say, you know, if the left hand does something, the right hand knows about it easy, immediately. So if you have, if you're looking at your, 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 your projects, uh, you know, if a project manager changes something within a budget uh, and you're the owner of the organization, and you suddenly run a report, that report will have the most update information uh, available for you. So now I've had a look at my specific projects, I've played around with my budget, I'm happy with the actual fees that need to be associated to this. I now want to allocate my resources to the specific project. Once I do that, Obviously, it looks into my system. It looks at, at, at my utilization and the resources that, that are available. Is you know, are Yorick and Zainab actually available for this? So it, do, it does a bit of uh, thinking there, as you can see. But what I'm able to do now is I'm able to click immediately and look into my GAN chart. And this is a built-in GAN chart into the into, into the uh, into the solution, so I don't have a, I don't have to export anything. I don't have to take data out and put it into a, into a separate application altogether. This is all running off the, the the same data that sits within Unit 4 PSA. So here I can see these are the various components. Those are the the, the sub steps that I've got. I can go down into the, the individual sub steps quite easy to just actually you know to 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 scale it up and show that a a, a a a far more condensed version if i'm moving various components again within the gan chart it just tracks that information over as well okay so what i've shown for you now is um i've just taken you through the process of 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 showing you a, a bit of an overview of the solution um i've shown you how easy it is to actually create a project showing you some of the various tabs within the actual project and the summary of the tabs but now i want to show you how easy it actually is to present uh, um, your time and expense okay so if i look at my timesheet 
when I open up my timesheet, I have multiple components here. The green ones show that it hasn't been approved yet. Blue has been approved, okay? You have your combination, your totals at the bottom, so you can see how, how much time you've actually used in the day. I can see that I've, uh, uh, I still need to book some time against the amount of hours which, which I'm due. But what's really great as well is there's an automatic Outlook integration. So if you just have a look here, I'm going to go back to my Outlook. I'm going to go back to my calendar. Here in my calendar, just because it's after hours from this side, you know, there's various sessions here, discovery session, project update, in mind, etc. When I click on my Outlook retrieval, it goes ahead and it, it takes that data and it puts it into my timesheet. The great thing about this is we work with Outlook on, a, on such a daily basis and we plan our projects around there and we set up meetings, et cetera. But here what you can do, it brings in the data and you can now assign this to specific projects. So for example, I've got the specific one, purely by double clicking on it, I can take here the specific uh, project that I'm working on. I can take my our type. So let me just take, uh, sorry, that is, uh, yeah, I want to just analysis. If I have expenses, so for example, if you've got a specific expense that you've agreed with the with the, the client, whether it's a, a kilometer rates, etc., you can introduce that. I'm not going to add that now. And when you save it, basically what it does, it then updates that Outlook agenda meeting into Unit 4 PSA. All right. Now, we don't want to show, for example, that we're running lunch on a daily basis. You know, that's got nothing to do with anyone else. So by me just refreshing my screen, what happens is it just keeps my core data that I've imported and assigned to projects, and it eliminates everything else, and it gives me just a clean environment to work from. It's very easy to actually allocate time within within the solution. You, you allocate it on a project. You, it's a click and drag environment. Uh, it's a day rate, for example. Um, and I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to take it down like that. So it's a full full area component. Uh, what's great as well is if you know that this is a a something that runs on a recurring basis, I can paste, copy and paste that that uh, that entry. So it's a very easy way to manage your time. Now we've allocated some time, and I see that just from a demo point of view that I need to. We're running a bit short. Um, now what we need to do is we need to approve the time. So if you think about it, we've created a project, we've assigned resources to the project, those resources have done the work, they've now uh, um, uh, allocated their time and expenses towards the specific projects, okay? And uh, now we need to approve that time at, you know, as a project manager at the end of the week. This is a very easy process to do and also sits directly within the solution. Now, we usually approve time at the end of the week. So because it's Tuesday today, I'm just going to move my calendar to the end. I'm going to do a bit of a refresh. And what it does for me now, it shows me all my specific projects that I'm related to as a project manager. So there's a few that I've been working on here, gives you an overview. So that in mind, sure step one that I'd created for the specific demo, you can see this that it comes up with the the, the hours that are that I put into the into my timesheet, and that specific one. It's, that is the description which I actually created within my Outlook agenda. So it's taking data, that unstructured data, and again, creating it structured. Now, the great thing about this is when I need to start approving time, when I start looking at these various components, I can see exactly where I am from a budget point of view and how much of the budget I've used within the various sub-steps of my project. So I'm going to approve these. I'm only using 9% of my current project because it's in the beginning of, of the actual project. So everything is happy days and I'm going to approve the hours. It takes all of that information away and it just leaves me now with the project, with the hours that I still need to approve. But for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to go back to my project that I've pinned. Because now what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to make the money. We're wanting to send the invoice out. We've done all the work and we send invoices out on a weekly basis. We like to, we recommend that. 
Uh, it's about that that billing with precision. The you know the sooner you get the 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 the, the invoices out, the the quicker it is to actually get the money in. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to create an invoice. And now what it does, again, we create invoices at the end of the week. So I'm just going to do that process. It shows me my specific hours that I've just approved and has created an invoice for me. So I'm clicking OK on that. Now I'm showing you multiple roles within an organization, but I'm sure you understand that from a demo aspect. So I click OK, and now what happens is it actually generates my invoice for me. Our solution, we generate the invoice from PSA, because that happens from a transactional point of view, from an operational aspect within the organization. Um, and then we integrate that 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 invoice through to your um, your financial solution. Okay, so if we just have a look here, I get some base data again. Um, and I can have a look at my preview, for example. You know, what is my what is this invoice actually going to look like? Is it the right information that's been sending out? Who are the right people that's sending? Is it the right project, etc.? This is all fully templatized, and this is something that in in mind would be able to do for you quite easily. They're trained up in this. Um, if I go back to my summary, you can see that there's no invoice number created yet, and that's because the 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 invoice hasn't been approved. The minute I approve it, and I'm just going to save it quickly just to repeat it quite quick, just to make it go quicker. I, it generates an invoice number. Once that happens, the transactional data of this invoice gets transferred through to your financial solution. Okay. From here, it's very easy. I can. This can all be automated, by the way. I'm just throwing you, showing you the manual process of it. You know, from here, it's quite easy. I can in. I can just press email, and I can just create an email with a PDF. I'm not going to do that now because I haven't set it up specifically. For this environment's not set it up, set up to send emails. So, but this is. Uh, this can be automated. Okay. So, what I've really showed you here today. Ladies and gentlemen, and for those of you that are on the uh, the presentation with us today, is I've taken you through a process from my Outlook environment, taking that unstructured data, putting it into a structured environment, creating an opportunity, creating sorry, creating a a project, allocating resources to the project, allocating my time and expenses towards that specific project, approving it, and going back and actually sending the invoice at the end of the day. Everything that you've seen here today within my, my from a demo point of view is stock standard within the solution. This is what you get out the box, and this is the standardized and templatized version that we're having a look at. So from here, I'm just going to go back to my presentation. So some key B business benefits for our solution is that it's the platform technology. It's built on the Microsoft Power Platform. So investing into the Microsoft Power Platform really does future-proof your, uh, your 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 technology stack uh, because of of the the Microsoft business applications which which they have. Um, it is the out it's out of the box, so it's standardized and it's built on best practice and it's built for those four sub verticals that I mentioned to you earlier, full integration into the Office 365 environment. So in other words, leveraging your current investments into your 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 uh, in, into Microsoft. It is a proven solution. We've been around for over 15 years. We have our solution is a, uh, a, a it, it's used globally. It's used by global organizations, and it's really you know from from small organizations to enterprise organizations use our solution as well. So to end off, what I've really shown you here is a single solution that's built on a single platform in a single environment, okay, and really takes you as an organization from a funnel to cash point of view. So there's a full sales optimization, there's a practice management component, there's a resource management component as well, the time and fee expense earners, so your your your, your fee earners, they have the capabilities of accessing the solution and, and, and allocating their time, you know, by easy outlook integration, and then there's that fi uh, financial integration as well into your, e your ERP solution.
Okay, so that is it. I think, Marcos, I'm doing well from a time point of view. We've got a few mm -hmm. minutes left. Um, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Thomas, for the great yes. presentation. Yeah, we've got a few questions. The first one okay. is, how does the license structure work? Ah, the license structure is actually very easy. We've simplified our licensing structure, so we really have two types of users to make it easy for organizations, so they don't need to have a look at, across the different type of uh, users that they have. We really have a, what we refer to as a professional user license, and that would be you know, your top management down to your project managers so anyone who's actually creating project and managing resources would be a professional user and then we have the essential user and that's your time and expense user great and we've got another question uh, yep. someone is asking is there a free trial or uh, any way to try this yeah, 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 we do. Um, and I think the, the best way to, to take that up is to get into contact with, uh, with InMind and they will be able to take you through the process. But we do have a process or, or an offer running at the moment where you can try the solution for free for two months. Uh, you can use as much of the solution as you want. You can put as uh, uh, many users into the solution as you want. But the, the, um, what we have running specifically at the moment is a um, uh, for a, a, a 10 user environment. So in other words, it's two professional users and eight essential users. All right. And uh, yeah. one last question. Yeah. Is it available for mobile? Yes, we do have. A, yeah, we we have. A, so we have a mobile app that's available both on Android and iOS, um, and that's for the for for time and expense. So it's got you know a, a picture a capabilities as well. So if you need to capture an invoice, uh, that invoice gets loaded up and stored within the, against the project, and it's and it it really is easy to use as well. So full functionality across all mobile mobile devices a true modern solution. All right, great. Well, thank you, Thomas. Thank you everyone for attending today's webinar presentation.